Greetings! I'm your host, Dr. Wolfie Lair. When I'm not texting people pictures of their future deaths, I'm here at the Wolfie Lair reviewing movies. I've been neglecting to review films from certain horror franchises over the years, one of which happens to be the Child's Play series, which of course stars Chucky, the killer ginger good guys doll. The whole evil doll thing has been around since Twilight Zone, but Child's Play was the first film that made an evil doll a slasher villain. As far as I know, of course. This would be ripped off by later movies like Dolly Dearest and Toy Story. I guess I should explain Chucky's origins. Well, he was originally a human serial killer named Charles Lee Ray, who gets shot down by police in a toy store. Conveniently, Chucky also happened to be into voodoo, so he transfers his soul into a nearby doll. Eventually, the doll winds up in the care of a kid named Andy, like in Toy Story. Later, it turns out Chucky's only hope of being human again is by putting his soul into Andy's body. You have to transfer your soul out of the doll into the... That of the first human being you revealed your true self to. Chucky tries to do this for the next two sequels. Of course, this formula got old pretty fucking fast. You can only watch Wile E. Coyote chase that damn Roadrunner so many times before you question why he even bothers. Same with Chucky. So after Child's Play 3, Chucky wouldn't have another film for seven years. Then in 1998, Child's Play was semi-rebooted with Bride of Chucky. It didn't start over, but it ignored the previous films and gave up on the Andy story arc. It also, as the title suggests, gives Chucky a female co-star. Well, enough setup. Let's watch the friggin' movie already. Jeezum. The film begins on a dark and stormy night. Yeah. Our first destination is the Lockport Police Department Evidence Depository. Evidence includes a cheap hockey mask, a chainsaw, a white William Shatner mask, and a clawed glove. Okay, what? Is this police department somehow adjacent to Texas, Illinois, Ohio, and wherever the hell Crystal Lake is? Or are these props just fan service Easter eggs that I'm overthinking? Probably, but I still want the answers I'm rightfully entitled to, damn it! Anyway, this officer here enters the evidence room, aka the Slasher Movie Museum, and ignores all of these valuable artifacts and instead grabs a very specific item. The cop has been hired by a mysterious woman to retrieve whatever's in this garbage bag. I wonder what's in it. Welp, curiosity takes hold on this guy and he decides to open it. Why not? YOLO! <laughs> he winds up paying for it with his throat, and consequently his life. At first, it appears he was murdered by an even trampier version of Catwoman, but nope, it's Jennifer Tilly. She plays Tiffany, Chucky's long-lost girlfriend. She snags the bag and reveals Chucky's bitched-up doll corpse. Well, hello, dolly. Tiff spirits her mangled boy toy away to her trailer home, where she attempts to reconstruct Chucky. Well, he's not exactly in mint condition, but I'm sure somebody on eBay will take him as is. Elsewhere, this fabulous-looking fellow named David has arrived at Police Chief John Ritter's home in order to pick up the Chief's niece, Jade, for the prom. John Ritter asks David some important questions before he takes Jade out this evening, and all of the boy's answers are as heterosexual as possible. What are you going to study? Theater arts. But on an athletic scholarship, right? Playing hockey? Figure skating. Mm-hmm. Next, David hands Jade her corsage for prom. I love lilies. Actually, it's an orchid. A cymbidium orchid? You put it in a vase and drop an aspirin in the water, it should last you the whole week. Or so I read. Man, this guy is so straight. The two lovebirds drive off, and on the way, this dude named Jesse pops up in the back seat and starts making out with Jade in front of David. David, that's your girl! Why aren't you doing anything about this? David made quite an impression. I think Warren's in love. Yuck. <laughs> Not my type. I'm so over that whole uniform thing. Wait, he's actually gay? That's not true. That's impossible! Stretch your feelings, you know it to be true. Whatever, Darth Vader, I'm over it now. Don't have to be so dramatic all the time, jeez. Anyways, the teens end up getting pulled over because John Ritter saw through their clever ruse. Gotcha. What a great use of taxpayer money. Back at the trailer, Tiffany is attempting to bring Chucky back to life. The Elric brothers almost died trying to do this bullshit, but they didn't have a copy of Voodoo for Dummies on hand, so Tiff here has a decent shot. Well, that was a waste of a Saturday night. 
She does get a visitor in the form of her wannabe boyfriend, Damien, here, who thinks it's cool to dress like the crow. It isn't. Check it out. What is it? You mean, who is it? Who is it? You mean, who was it? <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God, you really did a number on him, didn't you? Nothing gets a girl hotter than a picture of a guy you just murdered. You know, Damien... This guy looks awfully familiar. I recognize the nail polish. Shit. Was he friends with Tom Savini? Tiff notices that the ginger kid she tried to bring back to life is gone now, mysteriously. Even scarier is Damien's attempt to get laid. Come on, Tiffany. Let's die a little. A little part of me died right now. Chucky stops this horror from continuing by appearing next to Tiffany. Damien mocks the doll, which won't bring any consequences with it. <laughs> Tiffany propositions Damien and proceeds to handcuff this Hot Topic employee of the month to her bed. God, was he an incredible lover. He was the best I ever had. Come on, baby. I ain't big enough to take care of a woman like you. It ain't the size that counts, asshole. It's what you do with it. Nothing makes Chucky want to kill a guy more than when they talk about his doll penis. Chucky winds up smothering the son of a bitch while he catches up with his old flame. I gotta be honest, I always thought you were gonna let yourself go. He really knows how to sweet talk a lady. Back with the completely unrelated teenager plot, the kids are getting breathalyzed in the rain. This is just stalling so Uncle Cop John Ritter can pick up Jade. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna let you embarrass me by ending up on Jerry Springer with some trailer trash lowlight. You fuck! Wow, that's a great line delivery. Screw him. If I were you, I would take Jake, get the hell out of Dodge, and never look back. No, you wouldn't. You're gay, remember? We cut back to Chuck and Tiff making Swedish meatballs. Truly terrifying. They really know how to make you fear Chucky as he's being straddled around like an infant. I still have the ring. Oh, that. The one I got from Vivian Van Pelt. You mean... You weren't going to ask me to marry you? What are you, fucking nuts? <laughs> hey, dude, you're not really prime marriage material yourself. I mean, look at your mullet. Tiffany strikes back against Chucky with a tickle fight and then locks him inside a playpen she has for some reason. Then she takes a nap. When is she going to get rid of Dr. Frankenfurter's body over here? Maybe tomorrow. The best time to dispose of a corpse is in broad daylight, and she has her neighbor, who happens to be Jesse, unwittingly help her. Tiffany asks the poor Lummox out on a date, but he logically declines, while also bringing up that he's seeing Jade. Treat her right, Jesse. Excuse me? Treat her right. Never take her for granted. It's like my mother always used to say, a woman spends all day slaving over a hot stove for a man, the least he can do is the dishes. She's kind of a philosopher, my mother. Is she also a psycho like you? Spell? C-H, that is incorrect. <laughs> hey, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 already did the speak and spell joke. Tiffany returns and decides that Chucky's probably pretty lonely in that baby cage, so she gives him a lifelong companion. Ah, uh, you couldn't get him one of those my size Barbie dolls? Tiff does some relaxing in the tub while watching the news report of the recent murders. Damien Baylock, whose real name was Howard Fitzwater. Wow, so Frankenfurter was really Brad Majors the entire time. She flips the channel to a much better movie with the word bride in its title. While this is going on, Chucky pulls a Rugrats and escapes, grabbing a knife from the drawer. This is why you need to keep them out of reach of your children. It's just bad parenting. <laughs> This is also why you don't keep electronics near your bathtub. This movie has a lot of educational value. Well, Chucky attempts to undo his most recent murder with the old doll resurrection trick. You are going to love, honor, and obey. I wouldn't marry you if you had the body of G.I. Joe. Hey, Raggedy Ann, you looked in the mirror lately? Now's not the time to get picky. Yeah, she looks like Roseanne Barr now. 
The puppets start to plan out how they're gonna be human again. As it turns out, Chucky happened to have been wearing a Dracula medal when he died that can transfer souls into human bodies. That makes the first three movies slightly pointless. The amulet also happens to be buried with Chucky's human corpse conveniently. So, to get transportation, Tiffany arranges to have Jesse deliver some dolls. The dolls being Chucky and her. Tiffany gets herself a gothic makeover because Hot Topic merchandise isn't gonna sell itself. Jesse pops in and picks up these freaky looking dolls. On the way, he stops by Jade's place and proposes to her. He rationalizes this decision with the fact that he has $500. How can you resist a man with $500? Chucky and Tiff catch John Ritter snooping around in the back of Jesse's van. Chucky, who has spent enough time not killing anybody, decides that John Ritter will be his next target. Tiffany, though, believes that knifing someone to death isn't 90s enough, so they opt to use a less obvious approach instead. Okay, that looks like a completely different person. Why does that look so familiar? Yeah, I saw that episode of Three's Company too. The dolls do some corpse disposing before the kids come back. Jade and Jesse continue their journey none the wiser. Though, just because John Ritter is out of the picture, that doesn't mean they don't have to worry about cops anymore. Can you just, please, give us a break? You know, I wish I could. You seem like really nice kids. It's nothing personal, at least on my part. But the money. <laughs> the altercation here gives Chucky a perfect opportunity to smoke a J. It's obviously for his glaucoma. The cop checks the back of the van for anything incriminating like dead bodies, so Chucky distracts him with the weed. This is like Christmas for cops. It's been 10 minutes, so Chucky has to kill somebody. This happens to be the cop, and the method he uses is explosion. <laughs> Every movie I review has to have one. Jade and Jesse don't linger here for too long. During this pleasant evening drive, David informs the couple that everyone thinks they're responsible for the murders that keep going on. That doesn't stop them from heading down to Niagara Falls to get hitched. Back in the van, Chucky is jamming when suddenly John Ritter decides to wake up from his nap. Stop him! Kill him! This was obviously only written in the movie to give Chucky something to do. I mean, you know you got a really good horror movie concept when the killer spends most of the runtime sitting around. Later on in the evening, the lovebirds are enjoying their honeymoon suite, knowing full well that they're wanted for murder. For the time being, in the absence of any other information, these kids have to be considered armed and extremely dangerous. This other couple barges into the room for no reason and brightens things up. Oh. Well... This little guy has a face only a mother could love. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I wouldn't talk if I were you. The lady manages to swipe Jesse's wallet before requesting that they all get together and have a freaky foursome. That request is denied, though. The two swingers do some celebrating, but they aren't without their company. Yeah, come on. Tiffany throws a CG bottle that breaks the mirror ceiling into CG glass shards, which turns the couple into Hawaiian punch. In the heat of the moment, Chucky proposes to Tiffany, and they proceed to have, uh, sex. I can't believe I have to censor doll nudity. I feel extremely bad for the people that had to operate the puppets during this scene. I wouldn't be able to look at my hand the same way again after doing this. Wait, what? 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 Have you got a rubber? Have I got a rubber? Yeah. Tiff! What? Look at me! I'm all rubber! Oh, that's right. Wait, I, I thought you were plastic. Tiff. What? Kiss me. Wait, if having sex in a horror movie results in you getting killed, doesn't that mean Chucky will have to... commit suicide? <laughs> Probably not, I don't know. The cleaning lady comes into the room, even though it's the middle of the night, and it doesn't really make sense. She isn't too pleased about the mess left over by the previous guests. <coughs> Jade and Jesse get the hell out of there the next morning. Oh, we didn't even get to see the pool! The two both suspect each other of being multiple murderers and get a visit from their best friend David, who reassures them that they can't possibly be killers. 
Though he does smell something odd and investigates, discovering a dead John Ritter in a trunk. This disturbs David, but Jade and Jesse are just happy to have David here as a friend. Pull over! Pull over now! Oh, okay, never mind. David's ready to get the police involved, but the living dolls will have none of that. David then decides to walk in the middle of traffic. <laughs> Jesus, why did he fucking explode? The dolls command Jesse to just keep driving. The dolls explain to the humans that they're planning on possessing their bodies so they won't have oddly shaped heads anymore. They wind up trading out their van for an RV they're borrowing from an old couple they killed off camera. After making some cookies, Tiffany gets pissed about Chucky not washing the dishes. I thought one of the perks of being a serial killer was that you didn't have to wash dishes. The kids use this opportunity to overpower the dolls with their human strength. They end up going off the road. Jade's fine, but Jessie's a bit incapacitated. Tiffany, on the other hand, has been charred to a cinder in the oven, so she isn't very happy with Jade right now. Jessie saves Jade and gets her out of there, with enough time left over to go into Bruce Willis mode, jumping away from the RV explosion. Jesse watches as Jade carries Chucky away at gunpoint, so he runs after her, remembering to bring his doll for the tea party. They get to the cemetery where Chucky's corpse is buried and opens up the coffin that has rats in it for some reason. Well, Chucky finally has his prized amulet that I kinda forgot about for most of the movie. Jesse arrives and there's a hostage exchange between the two parties. Jade and Jesse are happy to be together, but Chucky and Tiffany? Eh, not so much. Chucky decides to ruin this reunion with a knife throw in the back. So now Chucky and Tiffany are going to pass on into their new sexy bodies. Kiss me. Tiffany decides to just screw it and stabs Chucky in the back literally. <laughs> of course, that isn't enough, so they shovel duel a bit. <laughs> Chucky stabs her though. Though he does leave himself open to a shovel sneak attack. The police arrive just in time to stop the fugitive teenagers, but they didn't tell him how to handle this situation in police academy. Jade knows what to do though. Don't move! Go ahead and shoot! I'll be back! I always come back! Unless you do terribly at the box office. Chucky is shot dead, which is pretty lame by horror villain death standards. The cop lets Jesse and Jade go with no questions asked. No trial, no nothing. Odd, considering everybody thought they were murderers and the only other suspect is a dead doll. Whatever, they can just go. The cop then inspects Tiffany's corpse by poking at it several times. She then gives birth. Don't babies usually take nine months to happen? Are dolls different or something? Uh, whatever. The puppet attacks the cop, and the sequel will come out in six years. Enjoy the wait. Well, that was Bride of Chucky. Not a bad movie or anything, as far as your Chucky movie expectations go. It was clear they were going for a horror comedy with this one, but they neglected the horror part of things. This movie's like if Tim Burton decided to make a stoner road trip comedy. It's also hard to take Chucky seriously when it doesn't feel like he does much for an hour of the movie. Oh well, I give Bride of Chucky a high Chucky out of Jack Tripper. I got these bruises from falling down the stairs, okay? Rude fucking doll.